demonstrating against the U.S. strategy in Afghanistan and Iraq. For the last five years, this group of military families and war veterans have held a vigil every Wednesday afternoon in New Jersey. For them, the waste of human lives, not to mention the huge amount of money spent on these conflicts, has stained the image of the United States for generations to come. While officially combat troops from Iraq are gone, there are still 50,000 U.S. soldiers there. But today, Washington's priority is Afghanistan, a war which has entered its 10th year, a war many question whether it can be won. Um, I started this when my son was sent to Afghanistan, and I do it to let the my fellow Americans know how I feel and that I feel that it's very important that we stop invading other countries. Um, I gave up on this for a while. I was very, very discouraged. Um, I really felt that we were not doing any good at all. There are almost 100,000 U.S. soldiers in Afghanistan. And while President Obama brought home combat troops from Iraq, he warned that a new U.S. strategy in Afghanistan would involve tough times before things got better. President Obama never said he was pulling the troops out of Afghanistan. People wished he would, but he never said he was going to. It's our fight. We have to fight with every ounce of our souls. We have to fight to, to demand that they pull the troops out. I want to believe that we've got a foot in the door, and if he can stay in office, I, I want to believe that things are going to change more drastically. He's done a lot of good things, but there's so many things, especially when it comes to the military, it might as well be George Bush. He hasn't changed. But a lot has indeed changed since shortly after September the 11th, America and its NATO allies stood united behind George Bush. And the people Well, here all of us soon. The war against terrorism had been launched. Just three weeks later, on the 7th of October, the United States fired its first missile attacks against Afghanistan's Taliban regime, a regime said to be hosting terrorist training camps and hiding Osama bin Laden. U.S. bombs allowed Afghanistan's opposition Northern Alliance to take over Kabul by the middle of November. The Taliban regime was toppled. They fled. On the 5th of December, the first U.S. troops arrived, followed by many of their NATO allies. Nine years on, they're still there. But despite the quick crush of the Taliban, bin Laden remained at large, and soon U.S. attention would be turned to Iraq, where in the spring of 2003, U.S. forces invaded the country to topple Saddam Hussein. Iraq would be long and costly, and Afghanistan would slowly fade from the international political radar. By 2009, the political tide had changed. A new American president said Afghanistan was once again top priority as the Taliban insurgency was growing stronger. The plan, like in Iraq before, to send a surge of 30,000 additional U.S. troops. The aim to stop the Taliban and hand over the reins to Afghan government forces as soon as possible. Thank you. So no, I do not make this decision lightly. I make this decision because I am convinced that our security is at stake in Afghanistan and Pakistan. This is the epicenter of violent extremism practiced by al-Qaeda. It is from here that we were attacked on 9-11, and it is from here that new attacks are being plotted as I speak. Nair Rosen is a journalist and author of the book Aftermath about America's wars in the Muslim world. He claims there's no clear U.S. strategy in Afghanistan and that Washington has miscalculated not only the unpopularity of the Afghan government, but the resilience of the Taliban. Uh, what are the goals in Afghanistan? Um, Obama has said that the goal is to uh, defeat, disrupt, dismantle al-Qaeda. If that's the goal, then they did that really by the end of 2001, and they won the war. Al-Qaeda left Afghanistan, went to Pakistan. 
um, is to go to defeat the Taliban. To date, they've had no success doing that. The uh, people of, of Europe, of, of, of the U.S., are growing increasingly impatient with this war. Um, it's hard to point out, it's hard to, hard to show why it's in our interest to have our troops over there. Um, so the Taliban know at some point the West is going to leave. We're going to betray the Afghan people like we did in the past. It's going to happen today, it's going to happen in five years, but it's going to happen. And it's going to be terrible no matter when it happens. But it's inevitable. Um, and the Taliban can just wait because they are, in many cases, the people. Um, and they have genuine grassroots support in, in many areas. Um, and if they're winning, why would they want to negotiate? The White House argues the surge will allow for a safer transition to Afghan security forces and pave the way for U.S. withdrawal starting next July. This deadline was at the heart of recent debate at the Brookings Institute in Washington. Since the surge, the number of NATO and civilian casualties has risen. Steve Cole has written extensively on Afghanistan, the CIA and bin Laden. He disagrees with those who say that foreign troops are unwelcome. Fundamentally, Afghans continue to demonstrate through their actions and their expressed opinions that they recognize they need international forces for a little while to continue to build their own national forces. And so they're tolerant of an international presence in Afghanistan that many people predicted 10 years ago they would never tolerate. Why? Because they recognize that, that their country has been devastated by 30 years of war. There really is an Afghanistan that Afghans believe in. They want to rebuild that Afghanistan. They don't want to be dependent on the rest of the world forever, but they need help in reconstructing the country after so many years of war. War that was, after all, caused by inter international invasions and, and interference. Um, the, the Veterans for Peace? Yeah. yeah. Frank Stearns is a member of Veterans for Peace. He was wounded twice in Vietnam, a war he believes has similarities with Afghanistan. Like in Vietnam, he says, it's hard to pinpoint the enemy. It's increasingly become a quagmire, and like Vietnam, there is a fear to admit defeat. See, the problem is this. We've gotten ourselves in two wars that are not winnable, and now how do we pull out of there without feeling like we lost in Vietnam. You know, that's what, just recently I was talking to a kid and he said, oh, you were in Vietnam, that's the war we lost, isn't it? Well, yeah, but it's the same thing. If we pull out of Afghanistan, it's like the U.S. has lost another war. They don't want to do that, you know, but there is, there just is not a, a military situation there. While a growing number of Americans are questioning their ongoing military presence in Afghanistan, the answer is far from easy. Washington has called Afghanistan a necessary war, a war aimed at creating not only a secure Afghanistan, but lending credibility to a country which, whether right or wrong, has vowed to win the war against terrorism.